Hello everyone, today we're talking about the new Monster Hunter Rise demo, just um, I've got my good friend Dave here, lead singer of Landing Strip, say hello to the pretty people Dave. Hello pretty people, how you doing? <laughs> so, the objective today is basically just, um, we played the, we played a co-op mission on, um, I can't remember the big monster, it was that one that spewed bubbles, but we basically just talk about talking about what we think of the demo, comparing it to other Monster Hunter games, because Dave here is a bit of a veteran compared to me, and um, what we what we hope for the game. Do you want to start off or shall I, Dave? Yeah, I just wanted to mention a point about if you can't pronounce a monster, monster's name in Monster Hunter, what we tend to do as the old school crew, me and my mates used to do, just give him stupid nicknames, because then you'll know which one you're talking about. Shall we call Bubbles Bubbles then? I oh, know it's not the most creative one, but get the point across, don't it? The Bubble Lizard. Bubble Lizard, oh, okay. That'll do. I think, um, have you seen any of the trailers from it? Just so I know. No, I haven't seen any trailers. And to be honest, the first experience I had of Monster Hunter Rise was literally playing it with you. Ah, okay. I think they definitely took some of the level structures and stuff like that for Monster Hunter World. It's a lot more open-ended. Because I have played like, the first one on the PSP. And that obviously you, you swap between loading times and stuff like that, going to different areas, don't you? Yeah, uh, that that's that's the one great improvement that Monster Hunter World brought to it. I don't know if the PC versions, because I've not played them, um, add that feature. But um, I've known all the ones I've played. Um, the uh, original PS2 one, uh, the PSP ones, they've, they've all had loading screens. And it was good because we used to cheese it. Because if there was a dragon that was about to kill you, you used to die through the loading screen. You can't do that now. <laughs> innovations that makes it harder then yeah you, you, you call bail out it's like oh where'd dave gone oh, hey. oh oh he's sucking his thumb in the corner he's having a potion <laughs> he's got his ass handed to him <laughs> we know his voice i'm doing there i must admit i still need to learn to use that pop it's got that whip thing you know? that's that's the new gimmick for the game ain't it uh, the grapple hook thing yeah yeah it's kind kind of like um like the um, you know the arm slingshot that you've got in Monster Hunter World, yeah. it's sort of like a different version of that. It sim functions similar, but uh, it works kind of like that pretty much. Because I know you can use special moves with it with the weapons and that, but the ones are we using? Unless I was pressing the wrong buttons, they didn't seem all that special. Because the idea is, because the other new gimmick is that you could ride the monsters as well. You could ride the monsters in the Aldens. You just had to jump on them. No, I mean control ride than that. That's the thing. It the, the, it was introduced um, with the insect glaive. I can't remember which game it was introduced, but I think that's when um, riding the monsters was introduced because it was the gimmick that you literally pole vault with the insect glaive. Hmm. Because I I know with um, Monster Hunter World. That's I, I want to point out. I have played the PSP original, but that was so long ago, so I can't really say much about it. But I'll play Monster Hunter World. But with that, you can jump on the monsters. But all you could do basically was just attack them with a knife a bit. Monster Hunter Rise, you had a full like controller setup and everything to control the monsters as you were riding them. So you can deal out damage to other monsters. Well, I did not experience that in the demo. <laughs> I was doing it. Uh, yeah, I, I know. But I, I, I know you were, but I, I didn't experience it. I never tried it. <laughs> I was going old school. I was I was going old school. My old school brain was telling me, ah. no, 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 no. That that's new. We don't do that. We don't. <laughs> it's like put a put a cross up and go like a vampire. But I must admit, the problem. I think the big problem with the demo is, is that I don't think it really. What's the word? I don't think it shows anything new. It does, but. It doesn't represent what the game is as well. That's the word. It, 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 it's, it's a taster, so it is a demo, uh, and it's not going to represent the full game. But at the same time, just giving you two missions to try, instead of giving you like a village to explore or something and then going on your mission, like because everybody knows that you, when you play Monster Hunter, you spend 60% you spend of your time in the village faffing around, and then the rest of the time hunting monsters. <laughs> Yeah, I think what they should have done is what Nintendo has basically been doing with a few of their demos. You basically get the prologue or something like that, and you play through the entire thing, But and it might have the town or something like that with it, and you can buy an upgrade on that to a certain extent. 
but the thing is once you beat the demo it'll save your progress so you then when you get the main game you can continue from where you're at yeah, yeah nintendo d- I, I know of an example nintendo did that with was um the pokemon sun and moon or was it alpha sapphire um the remakes to gen 3 they they did a similar thing you could you could send over it gives you these little tasks to do and then you could send items over from the demo to your main game when you brought it Sun and Moon did that with one of the Pokemon, but it's funny enough because the the one I was thinking was the Mystery Dungeon remake. That literally done what I said. It just gave you the prologue and everything. I think. Have you played the original Mystery Dungeon? Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, I've played one of them. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was all the. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It was the one on the DS I played. Well, the thing is, they're all on the DS at least. No, no, no. The original was on Game Boy Advance. No, actually, they were both on Game Boy Advance and DS. Yeah, yeah, there was counterparts, but what I'm saying is I played the DS one. I never played ah. the... Uh... Well, they're pretty much the same thing, anyway. I, I don't know, I think Monster Hunter should have done that. Cause, I say that as well, because doing like a, I played the Resident Evil 2 remake demo, and I feel like that was a better representation of its game compared to the Monster Hunter Rise one. I'm not saying it's a bad demo at all. Yeah. You got the point of the combat across, at least. I'm not calling it bad at all. It's just, I felt like it could have been a bit better. Also, why do they limit the amount of times you can go on a quest? That's stupid. Uh, I, I think that's a Nintendo thing, because like I said, with the 3DS, they used to do that a lot. So, I don't know if that's a Capcom or a Nintendo decision. None of the other modern Nintendo demos are like that, so it must be Capcom, but Capcom's not done that with any of the other games. Like, Resident Evil 8 demo, Maiden. Yeah, that, it's not, that's not a limited thing, so I don't know why this one is. I don't know, because it makes it feel arcade, you do it, because you put your coin in, you get 30 goos, and then that's it, that's your lot. Yeah, kind of. Although I do think Monster Hunter is a touch of an arcade game, though, ain't it? Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Well. It's more focused on gameplay than it is on story. Oh, come on. Don't you, don't you start ripping on Monster Hunter's lack of story already. We have, we're we not even five minutes in, are we? Ah, uh, fair enough. I think we're ten minutes in. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. What do you think of the weapons and stuff like that? Because I know you complained about one of the hammers or something like that. Yeah, um, the spin attack on the, um, on, on the um, hammer. Felt like it had been nerfed to high buggery because I was spinning around hitting L bubbles. You know, I, I, I was mashing that monster in the face. And the amount of times I knocked it down just by bashing it in the brain. Because I ended up switching attacks to the other attack patterns because I, not only was it leaving me open to his uh, hydro pump, you know, his jet of water, um, but. Um, yeah, it's pretty much hydro pump, yeah. I yeah, agree. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, not only was it leaving me open to his attack, but, um, well, which, that's the risk and reward, but it, the damage payoff wasn't worth the risk and reward. It wasn't doing substantial damage, whereas you go to Monster Hunter World, you do that attack, the monster knows you've done that attack. Because, it, because the idea of that attack is it's high risk and reward. Because you're just spinning around like a lunatic, you're leaving yourself open. But... If you pull it off properly, you, you, I, I was getting full combos of hits in, and I was doing like 13 damage a pop. Now the sh- I went in with a short sword afterwards, and the short sword was doing more damage than that on its normal attack. That I, that 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 needs balancing if that's the case. Hmm. There could be a possibility you hit one of his stronger points, but dude, I was aiming for the head. That's you. Mm, that's that you. That, that that's usually nine times out of ten. That's the crit spot. That's usually the point that you know, you get its attention by smacking it in the face with a hammer. And yeah. the thing, the thing was, when I switched to the other attack, I was doing. I mean, I know it's a slower, it's a slower, more methodical attack, but I was doing ninety-three damage a pop. It's it's a big trade-off. It, 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 the there's there's ne- usually the spinning attack has been on par, and that 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 was. A weird decision for me. It felt like it was, uh, yeah, nerfed beyond b- belief. I think for me, the gameplay, like, the two things that weirded me out at first, like, I felt like the weapons had no impact, like, in the controller itself. But then I went and replayed Monster Hunter World, and they're like, that's the same. But I think in my head, 
because the the Switch has got that um what's it called now? Um H D rumble, hasn't it? So Yeah, I'll... yeah. I don't I don't enjoy playing it with Joy Cons. Um I should give it another go with a pro controller. I played it with the pro controller, the the proper switch one. And I was very disappointed in um there was no feedback. I wouldn't mind more feedback with the HD rumble and stuff like that. I don't know if there's anything in the option. I didn't see anything. But it just felt very disappointed in that regard, considering what could have been done. I think I think I think the PS5 controller's really spoiled me because that that is a damn one hell of a controller that is. But I don't know. I was here he goes. Yeah, funny. <laughs> but seriously, I was I was expecting a bit more on that part. And what threw me off. I didn't know this at first that there was no lock on, and now none. The classic Monster Hunter doesn't have lock on. No, it's like um, to be fair, um, yeah. Well, I, I've never thought it's needed it because the cam the camera controls are perfect because they're on the shoulders. So it's like, well, that was with the older ones anyway. I can't actually remember the the controller layout for Monster Hunter World. <laughs> well, Monster Hunter World feels like any. It, I don't know, it reminds me of Devil May Cry. It's it's weird because I don't remember the control layer, but if you put the game in front of me and put put the controller in my hand, it, it's sort of like muscle memory because they've always yeah. had they've always had a similar controls. Especially considering I use like the classic weapons like the short sword, the great sword, and the hammer. The hunting arm was introduced in Monster Hunter Two, but you know, it's it's been, the hunting arm has been improved. I think. Way Monster Hunter World, anyway. I'd actually try it out in um, Rise. I think I do need to give it a bit more time. But I, I definitely will when I get it. Because it's a Monster Hunter game. And I'll get it. Because mm. uh, Monster Hunter World has got what's considered normal lock-on to any other third-person game, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. And... I just, I just assumed that modern Monster Hunter had that. I can understand the PS2 because everything wasn't quite set yet, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I was expecting Rise to have that, but then I learned that's how Monster Hunter was basically done up until World. So I'm surprised they didn't give the option for it, but I kind of see why. I don't really count the PS2, to be honest, anymore because the PSP improved the control system so much mm. because... On the PS2, you used to use the thumbsticks to swing your weapon. It was such a weird control style, and I'm so glad they did away with it and standardised it for the PSP, and then they pretty much kept that control system going all the way through. But uh, yeah, it, it, if you went to go and play Monster Hunter, what, Monster Hunter Original back on the PS2, getting used to them controls again, it oh, it feel like mental. Sounds pleasant, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, because I feel like Monster Hunter Rise works without lock-on. It's just very, very, what's the word? Alien Archaic. to me. No, alien. What was you going to say? I was going to say archaic, but that's more of, I'm still stuck on the control sets of Monster Hunter, the original, no, man. That, that's just... Uh... That sounds archaic to me, but I don't know, because there's control schemes that... If you compare, like, because I, I play a lot of older games like you do as well. If you play, I play them for the first time, and sometimes I'll think, "Oh God, why did they make the controls like this?" But then, once you get get once you get a bit over it, you realise it really suits the game. Like um, two games I played that do this, like Metroid Prime, because you can't. It's a first person game, but you can't look about with the the, the right analog stick. You gotta hold the trigger, like the top trigger button, and you move about like a robot. But it's got a lock on button, so you can lock onto enemies and shoot them. It sounds weird compared to modern FPS controls, but it works wonders. And the same again, I played Resident Evil 4 recently, and the controls, it, it should be wrong, it, it theoretically is, but it works within the context of its game. Like, I, I genuinely believe that if they put modern controls to Resident Evil 4, it would take away a lot of the interest in the game. It would take away a lot of the tension. I mean, if you take it broke, they'll fix it, and it's worked for... It It, it, it has it, it, it has worked since the PSP, so... Of 
Cool, blame him for not, you know. I'd rather him not change something and bugger it up and keep something that works. Because let's, let, let's face it, with companies these days, they change things and they royally, royally ruin them. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think I think the problem is it's like some consumers as well, like they think they're hundred percent the thing's gotta work for them, but sometimes you gotta meet it halfway. And I think there's cases where it shouldn't be that, but there is like odd times where, it, where it's so new where you kinda have to. But yeah, I think I'll get over the unlock on thing with Monster Hunter Rise. What do you think of the monster designs and the graphics in there? Um, well, the other monster that we fought that wasn't Bubbles, um, you know, the uh, the little thing with claws. The, the raptors. The, the velociraptor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the velociraptor, the velo- velociraptor with a chicken helmet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, with him, uh, yeah, he's just a standard... Velociraptor, yeah. The Monster Hunter games, that's usually the first thing you fight. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, we'll get you used to something that's a bit nimble, small, jumps around a bit, not got too much health. You know, probably one of the first things you'll fight. And it's, it's they're usually good introduction monsters. Mm. Uh, I, I got nothing really ne- positive or negative to say about the design. It's It kind of reminds me of other ones, but I suppose it's supposed to be a regional, because obviously with the Monster Hunter games, they're all set in different fictional regions. Because this one's a very Japanese-inspired one, isn't this? Very traditional Japanese. Yeah, and with Monster Hunter World, it's like it's like that those people have gone and sailed off to the New World. Yeah. They've sort of done... <laughs> the sort of Japanese have sailed to America. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah, it's really... I've, cause I've seen some of the trailers and so I've seen a bit more of the new monsters and stuff. There is some cool designs among them. Like I, I've seen a few ice ones and that, but one that really stood out to me was basically... Um, is it a Wyvern, the, the common dragon thing? Not the common, but what? the iconic Wyvern, one. Wyvern, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, your dragon, your dragon dragons, yeah. yeah. They're, they're Wyverns, yeah. Well, there's a variation of that and it looks like it's completely pale and it its neck stretches out like a monster from Resident Evil. Like, uh, 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 is it white by any chance? Yeah, like proper albino <laughs> white. I think I know which monster you're on about. Uh, it's a stretchy neck, you say? Yeah. And that's got... from Monster. That's from Monster Hunter One. It's called a Kizu. It might be that then. Yeah, it's got just. No... I don't think it has any eyes or anything like that. Just big ass teeth. Yeah, no. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks like it looks like a flashlight that you'd send to somebody you hate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Language, Dave. Mind hey, you, no kids are going to watch I, this. Let's be honest. Hey, I, I've kept my language very, very um, you know. I, I could have said royally effed earlier, and I says royally um, done over. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, yeah, I mean. Jesus, that monster looks terrifying. It looks like something straight out of the the RE remakes. Yeah, well, the great thing about that monster is the first time I, I um, because it, it fires balls of electricity at you as well. Yeah. And if it if it hits you with them, you literally lie on the ground paralyzed. It's like you go, and you, you it, yeah. And the thing is, is it because it, it, it's blind, it it goes on sense of smell and sound, so. If you walk slowly, the monster, you know, you, you can work your way around it. But obviously, if you're going in all there, like, you know, if somebody's using a gun, they're going to go, pew, pew, and it's going to hear that. So it's going to go for the gunner. Yeah. So it's a, diff- it's a different sort of monster to fight. It's, it, it requires a different sort of approach because it doesn't use the normal sense. It's like a monster normally sees you, it goes raw, and then charges straight at you. This will sniff you out. And then if you run in and attack it, it'll go from where all the sound or the pain's coming from and then attack that. Do you think they'll keep that kind of features in the game with it? Because this was done on the PS2, I assume. Yeah, uh, definitely, dude. I think, if anything, they'll improve upon its um, its fight. Because I've noticed with some of the older monsters that we fought in Monster Hunter World and, and when we saw the Raffian in Monster Hunter Rise, it, it, they've worked on the patterns and, mm. like... How the monster reacts to you. A lot better than no, I especially, 
Especially with the last two games, like um, well, the, the demo of Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter World, because they they are quite similar in concept, really, are they? Yeah. yeah. So I think Monster Hunter Rise has a touch with a bat touch of a battle with the fact that it that Capcom d- doesn't want them people to think that it's the spin off for the Switch people because they can't get Monster Hunter World. I think that's kind of a battle he's got with it, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's it's all so the Switch is always going to have one advantage over the um, console version is it's portable, so it's mm. going to be like the PSP all over again. Yeah, you play with your mates, you can play with them anywhere. I do think it was wise that they actually built up a new game for the Switch instead of just trying to port World onto it. Oh God, they would not have ported World. It would it would have looked like Minecraft if they'd have ported that. Considering they've got The Witcher on, because I know you haven't played The Witcher on the Switch, and I think it's fine considering everything. Like it's, it's not, it's not that, it's not buggy or anything. It's just, and I've never thought I can't. How to explain it? I think the characters in The Witcher, unless the very main protagonist, look ugly as hell anyway. Yeah, I don't think too much was lost with the Switch version, surprisingly. And if you just want a purely portable version, I think The Witcher 3 is fine. Well, that's what I was going to say, is, is um, <laughs> when it comes to The uh, Witcher, it's like, I, I don't know how it runs on the Switch, but I know for a fact my PS4 sounds like it's dying whenever I try to play it. Mm. But I think with Monster Hunter Rise, uh, two things that I think... Hang on. Now, one thing that shocked me is that it's using the RE engine. Because... Uh, I didn't think the Switch could run that engine, but apparently they can. Well, they did. Uh, Capcom were the ones that basically got Nintendo to add more RAM to it because they wanted more RAM to run the engine on it. Uh, honestly, I didn't think Capcom would do anything relevant with it considering how it's been treating the Switch up until this point. It put games on it, but it's just... They're put on with ridiculous prices and they ain't putting all the games on the physical cartridge despite being megabyte size with some of them. So I'm very surprised because the next two months we're getting two exclusive Capcom games. Now I know exclusivity with Capcom is about, you know, it's about as well as anything. <laughs> but... uh, well, Ryan, Ryan, do you mean Nintendo Capcom exclusivity? <laughs> no, not even that because our Dead Rising is supposed to be an exclusive series to Xbox, and all the good ones that came off the Xbox, then is. I don't know. I only played the first one. The only exclusive Capcom game is a crap game. <laughs> we, and that is true. What's it called? P- PNL3 or something daft like that. It's GameCube title. Like like, yeah, yeah. And um, obviously the last Dead Rising game. I think that was... No, that came to PS4 as well. Never mind. Did it? Oh. Yeah, I think so. Like a year afterwards or something like that. So uh, it's already been confirmed, basically, that Monster Hunter Rise is going to PC. Ooh, well, I think I think that's a good segue to bring us on to graphics, then. Oh yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think the raw graphics is not actually that bad. It's pretty good by Switch standards. I'll be honest. Um, when I played it, it it, it reminded me uh, well. You only get to play the one level, don't you? And yeah. it remind it reminded me of what what would happen if you took a, an original level from Monster Hunter One and gave it the Monster Hunter World treatment, because it reminded me of Forest and Hills so much. But it literally is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, well, it's both. I mean, it's if if I'm getting that vibes, it means that the might be them trying to play on the nostalgia vibes, you know, get get the Aldens back into it, so to speak. But um, mm. it shows a bit of lack of creativity if I'm getting... But back in the PS2, you couldn't jump over the mountains like I did accidentally when we was playing it. So I was like, dude, where, where have I gone? Oh, yeah. And I just flew up a mountain because I pressed a fly button. That, I remember, yeah, he's got that that whip thing you press, and we pressed that that item for you. Oh, I don't know what the bloody hell it was called. And we just ended up flying... Uh, we would just call it the... F- yeah, the fire, the the fire fly, fly yeah. fringing. But yeah. um, 
So, I think what was smart is they're focused more on the art style than the actual raw graphics. Yeah, definitely. Uh, th- that's another thing I wanted to say about the graphics. Even though, like, they feel some, they're genuinely. It's basically the Switch Eight because it feels like it's somewhere between PSP and and modern day consoles. It feels like it feels like that. But the, the art style, I think, not going for pure out like Monster Hunter World does with out and out graphics. I think going for an art style is better for the Switch. Because I think the thing with Monster Hunter World. It does have moments of good art style, but World is more focused on raw graphical power. I don't think it has a as nearly a strong art style as what I've seen with Roy so far. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But um, man, my, even on the PS4, I don't know what it looks like on the PC, but I can only imagine how beautiful that game looks. Because it, it looks it looks beautiful on the PS4. It looks brilliant in the PS5, so I assume it'd be pretty that the PC version pretty close to that. Well, yeah, the sky's the limit with the PC. Yeah, it just depends mm. how much money you're willing to sink into it. Yeah, it is. So I'm not gonna lie, I would be interested in seeing if it does happen. I say if it does it when it happens, what the PC version of Rise will be like. I think the one disappointing thing is is his 30 frames. But it's um, it's not the bad kind of thirty frames. I think it's a bit more made with thirty frames in mind. So I think there's games that are, I think games that are made with thirty frames in mind run better than games that use that were made to sixty frames but lower to thirty frames. If that makes sense. Yeah, but the thing is, is I'd rather have a game that runs at a solid thirty that than the one that tries to tries to run at sixty but keeps chopping about. Hmm. Like um. One game that two games have come to mind that are somewhat similar, but not really. But like Sekiro, Sekiro is thirty frames and I think base consoles basically, and I feel like you can notice it with it. But if you play Ghost of Tsushima, because that's pretty, it's nowhere near as intense when it comes to parrying, but you do have to have a bit of a focus on that. But the thirty frames on that game is far more tolerable than Sekiro is. But both games are absolutely brilliant when you get 60. <laughs> so I'll be interested to see if that affects Monster Hunter Rise at all. Yeah, I mean... Um, I think it will. Obviously, well, on the PC, I mean, some people even go above 60, do they? But they, apparently the human eye can only detect so many. But, uh, yeah, um, as long as... You, I'd rather have consistency over, over higher frames, to be honest. I'd rather it be locked at a lower rate. And be consistent, yeah. Than chopping about, because there's, there's. I think that's. If there's one thing I can say is, is from playing Fallout games, um, which are completely different, they know how to chop. <laughs> yeah. I think with Rise, I'll be like, if that rumor of a Switch Pro exists, if that thing exists, I feel like Monster Hunter Rise will be a showcase game for oh, us. Oh yeah. It'd be, be nice to see as well, though, I guess, switch with a bit more power. Because um, uh, for an handheld, it's, I, I think it's exceptional. But as a home console, but then again, I play, mo- play mostly my uh, handheld, to be fair. I, I don't really dock it that often. Unless I'm playing multiplayer with some, like... <laughs> unless you play multiplayer with somebody locally. Hmm. I think... Um, I. I like to see more power, but the thing is with Nintendo, other other than the Super Nintendo, whenever they try to go for more power, it all, they always fail for some reason. There's always something that holds it back. Well, they're just happy doing their own thing then, are they? Yeah, I suppose so. I'd love Nintendo to somehow have the power of modern consoles, but their creativity still. I think that would be a, dr- a bit of a dream for me, you know what I mean? But I think, to be fair, w- w- with the older... G- I'm coming back to the older games here. Um, yeah. The PSP ones um, used to run um, pretty damn great. The P- I do remember playing the PS2 version of Monster Hunter, though, and I remember when you used to go into like the swampy areas where there's a lot of foliage, and then you'd fight something... You remember the Corrine, do you? The Thunder Horse, the, the one with the, the unicorn that lightning bolts you... Did you ever fo- 
Vaguely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when you was that was a monster into uh, original monster, and when I used mm. to play that one on the PS two. Hang on, did did I get? If it, I can never remember how far I got on the PS two, but it's exactly the same game as. Yeah. PSP. Yeah, so uh, the Fatalis. I remember getting to the end on the PSP, but I never got to the Fatalis on the PS1. PS2. PS2. Yeah. Um, but th- but the Korean, you, you, you used to chop, but then again, what do you expect? That's frigging PS2 hardware. Yeah, but the PSP is basically a, P- a portable PS1, so I'm, I'm really surprised Monster Hunter Original works so well on it. Yeah, I mean, it's like there's, the thing is, is... If you were to put both of them side by side, because the PSP screen was so small, it worked. You couldn't see that. You couldn't yeah. see that. Like um, the graphics were, there were a slight downgrade, but it wore noticeable. I miss when we had like proper handheld. We don't have that anymore, do we? It's mobile, or not at all. Yeah. Now, yeah. Well, they don't even they don't even sell games so. No, no, they just nickel and dime you. Ah, oh, true, yeah. Uh, so, I think it's getting to the point where we talk about what we expect and what we want from Monster Hunter Rise. So, what are you hoping for on that? Um, well, with games of recent, I've learned not to expect anything, just expect the worst. But I'm I'm hopeful for this one. Um, I think it'd be it'd be a good entry in the series and. Uh, um, the, the, I think I think it will be. I, I don't know if it'll be as good as Monster Hunter World because my personal story wise, it might beat Monster Hunter World. But um, you know, because well, let's face it, it what having a story is better than not having one. <laughs> well, the thing is, with Mon- with Rise, they got named characters this time round. Yeah, well, with Monster Hunter World, I think it was like. I mean, there was cut scenes in the, um, like, Monster Hunter Freedoms and whatnot and all that, but it was just, like, literally, oh, look, there's a dragon flying by. And then that was about it. Um, there were there was no story in the older games. So Monster Hunter World was a stepping stone, and if Rise can just rise above that... Uh... Uh, I, think, I think with Monster Hunter, it doesn't need too big of a story. I think just for me... Just some context to why I'm doing some of would be just a big thing. With Monster Hunter World, I'll say this. I think the story so far, because I've not completed it, is good. But y- you'll agree with this. There's no character building because they ain't got no names. Yeah. Because they're trying to get you to feel emotions toward um, the handler, ain't they? But again, how can you feel emotion to someone that has no name? Well, I suppose, yeah, she's just... Yeah, especially some of the outfits they put her in as well. Mm, I feel like... I'm, I'm so, uh, it feels weird that they ain't got a name. I feel like having a name would make such a difference. But, yeah, I really think that would have made a difference. And I think that's something good that Rice has done, like just giving them names. From what I've heard in the trailers, I'm not sure how true this is, is so... Anyone in the comments want to correct me on this? Go for it. But I heard there's some kind of corrupting thing, and they got, and that's that's corrupting the monsters, and they're basically attacking the village. I think that's a plot to a Studio Ghibli film that Horizon Zero Dawn ripped off. Oh well, um, yeah. I mean, I I I like in the story to Monster Hunter World so far, but yeah, mm. I still ain't frigging completed it. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah. I, it, I just think, yeah, the, the, they just need to work on their character building. Because the world, the, the world building's fantastic. The world is, it's it's alive. Yeah, agreed. The, mon- the way the monsters interact with everything and stuff like that, I think that's really good. That's one thing you got to give Capcom. They really know how to make a world out of it. Yeah. And it's a lot better now there's no loading screens between areas because that used to break up the pace. But like I said earlier, you could use that to cheese certain monsters. I don't think we have to worry about Rise as much as like um, like certain... What's the word? Certain... A, ga- a game that's games. recently... Be- I-, I was going to say a-, a-, a game that's recently been released that rhymes with spunk. Yeah. Basically, because... Um, 
I think there's a lot more confidence behind it, especially with, well, demo. I feel like if you got a demo out on the game and the demo's fine, I feel like you're more confident about it than if you don't, you know what I mean? At, at least they ain't like Konami and the charge just the day charges for the demo. Yeah, I feel like I feel Capcom's got a, got a good streak going on. Uh, I doubt they want to spoil it now, so I think they'll do with those. Yeah. I'm not sure if they'll beat World, because I think World was a bit... Cause Capcom are weird at the moment. I say not weird, but they basically had a bit of a renaissance since the start of 2017. But ever since like Resident Evil 7, I don't know what I don't know what happened with Capcom, but they just like they really switched around what they were doing. So I think the I think the biggest two incidents Capcom had, I say three now, but is that um, Devil May Cry 5 had um, microtransactions in, but they were so irrelevant to the game. No one really complained. Yeah, but that's how they sneak them in, ain't it? Yeah, but it's not even it's not even costumes or anything like that. It was just like an extra life or something like that or some. But I don't think that many people bought it. And they had a um, Resident Evil Resistance, and they kind of like people believe. I I genuinely believe it as well that the resources they took to make Resistance could have been put into making RE Three Remake a lot better. I still think it's a good game, but. Is missing bits, and I don't know why they've put it into a multiplayer. And the multiplayer had microtransactions, and then they got that RE verse, which is like um, it looks like a third-person hero shooter. The game that nobody asked for. Yeah, because like they've been sending it out to well-known YouTubers and Capcom YouTubers and stuff. Literally every single person who I've seen that's played it have said it's garbage. I don't know why they keep trying to make multiplayer. Resident Evil games, they never seem to work. I think it could work, but them just gearing about it all wrong. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the right answers, but um, mm. whatever them doing at the moment, I feel is wrong. I know they got, a, I know they had a co-op series that was supposed to have been pretty good, so I'm surprised they don't do that. But yeah, then you got Resident Evil Five. So anyway, we're off topic. We're not supposed to be talking about Resident Evil. It's supposed to be Monster Hunter, but it's still Capcom related, so not too bad. I know, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. I just hope as well we Monster Hunter Rise, the Switch Online, don't bugger it up. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah. Well, I play Minecraft with me mate Jake and trying to keep a stable connection. They need to sort that out. Because I think what we played was actually pretty good, I think. Yeah. But I think this is more of a Nintendo thing than a Capcom thing because... Um, Nintendo does not know how to do online whatsoever, I don't think. Like, they might have one or two games that are okay. Like, Splatoon's okay. I've heard Mario Kart's all right, but Smash Bros. is a complete mess still, apparently. Well, when I played... Uh, well, it was before be- before they started charging you for the online. I used to go on Mario Kart online all the time. And I always used to either be finishing first or second. But if I was finishing second, the guy in front was like half a lap in front of me. Because that's the problem with Mario Kart. It it, it it's like the if the w- one guy gets out in front, it's just. I know the online can be very bad, but it can be pretty decent as well if if it if it's got a good net code and everything behind it. But I think the biggest problem kind of shows with um, Monster Hunter Rise is that I know they got an invite system, but Nintendo hardly uses it, and I don't think Rise uses it. He's got his own built-in thing with a code and everything. And like, and then he hasn't got proper voice chat, has it? It says it has, but I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I mean, we ended up using Discord or something, didn't we? Yeah, I think that's a big problem. You shouldn't have to use outside sources to communicate. You don't do that with PlayStation and Xbox. And I know what people say, oh, it's it's... It's only 20 quid. It's, it's less what you expect. And I'm, like, I'm expect to be able to talk to my friends and invite them. Because what Nintendo Switch Online basically done, it gatekeeps the online. And it's like, oh, you can have NES games and stuff like that. But not many people want that, though. They just want online. I think Nintendo should have just put the, the price on the... The retro games just kept online free. Yeah, because I mean the the other two, um, PlayStation and Xbox, I'm doing them. 
that PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass. That they could have probably just stuck it in something like that, but then again, they wouldn't. Nobody'd have been using it. I think the reason they'd bundled it in with the online was like, oh look, you're getting some value because look how much these games was worth. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. I think the I think they would have been all right without it. I don't think maybe it wouldn't have made as much money, but I still think it would have made a large you know chunk of change. Because no, as far as I'm aware, there's no improvements been added to, to the online. They had a menu put in recently, but that's about it. But, hang on. I've got the Pro Controller. There's no input for a mic or anything like that. Yeah, you're supposed to use that mobile app, but... is it, You know, it's, it's already a portable console. You're trying to convince people to play instead of playing phone, phone games on their mobile. So why are you encouraging people to go? Oh, look at my phone! Oh, there's games on here. You know, I think that's something that um, I think Rise will suffer with compared to World, because it's vastly easier to communicate in World than it is Rise. You have to go to outside sources to do it. Yeah. Well, we will be able to sit around the tab and table then, will we? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you we don't know yet, so. But I think that I think that is something that I think I really wish Nintendo got sorted. I'm also a touch concerned that it could turn into a live service Monster Hunter Rise, but Monster Hunter World is a live service game, but it's a live service game done really, really, really well. Yeah. Take notes, EA. Activision, Ubisoft, basically every Western AAA game company. Because it's like I think the one thing Monster Hunter World did well as a live service game is that it had a really big and good campaign. They made a game first, then they added ways you can buy stuff in it. And even then they added more like, you know, expansions and stuff like that. Yeah. So if I want to do more live service games, I kind of wish they did that. Because that's, that's the big problem, just not making good base games. If the base of it is crap, the entire thing will be. See, I, I don't like live service games normally anyway, but if you look at how the old Monster Hunters was um, laid out, like with the Guild Hall and whatnot, they were doing live services before live service was a thing. There's a lot of games out there that I think were about borderline. They had the blueprint to be a live service game. Like, I genuinely believe... The main series Pokemon games could be good live service games. But Game Freak, I think, are just terrible developers. And I feel like Monster Hunter is another one. Monster Hunter is a good idea for a live service game. And I feel like World proves that. Hell, even Smash Bros. is technically a live service game. Yeah. But that's done really well. Because he's got a good base. But Nintendo um, and Game Freak, I don't know what they did with the Pokemon online. But they absolutely buggered it. Because tr- trying trying to com- just communicate with your friends on Pokemon or connect to them or battle or trade with them, it's a bloody nightmare. I mean... What, Sword and Shield? Or... Yeah, oh, God. They've, I genuinely believe someone needs... To, I want Capcom to make a mainline pa- Pokemon game at this point. Because Monster Hunter proves they can come up with some cool monsters and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I mean, they, they did it with... They did a weird crossover on... Um, on a, what was it, a Metal Gear Solid uh, Peace Walker, um, where you got to fight Monster Hunter monsters. You got, you got to. I heard about that. Yeah, that, that was amazing. That was I absolutely love that. <laughs> to, g- going at a Raffalos with a rocket launch, it was hilarious. I can imagine that was pretty cool. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'd like them to attempt it. This is very, very rambly and off-topic stuff, haven't we? Well, but I suppose it, that's how we work. Yeah, but it's 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 all relevant in its own weird way. Yeah, Rise, I think will be good. I do think we'll get a good, something good out of it. Yeah, it'll get a rise out of me. I think that's it because I think we got quite a bit of audio there. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So, yep, we recognise it's a bit rambly, but you got a lot of inf- information and stuff like that out of it. Hopefully, you everyone enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and click that bell if you want more stuff. And thank you, Dave, for joining us today. Ah, it's all right. Uh, good to have me and all that. And uh, welcome to the show. And I hope you have a good time. But yeah, uh, thanks for having me, dude. Um, um, hope some of my um, 
vague inside knowledge was all right and served you well. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. Bye. Ta-ra.